Howdy everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now it's been a good while since we've had a completely new vise to review, but I've got one for you today. And I've been pretty excited about reviewing this one for at least a couple months since I saw Al and Gretchen Beatty tying on it at an expo in Boise earlier this year. And the vise I'm talking about, it's called the Nirvana. And the best I can tell, it's made by a company called Nirvana on the fly, or it may be Dragontail Tenkara. And I couldn't really tell when looking them up online. They both had the same address. It was in Chubbuck, Idaho. Now you can buy the vise from Dragontail's site online, or you can buy it from Brandon Moon's site called Moonlit Fly Fishing, which his address is the same as the other two. So kind of thinking all three of these companies are either the same or really closely related. So let's talk about the vise. And the four things I look at when reviewing a vise, first is how well does it hold a hook? If it doesn't hold a hook well, it's not gonna be a good vise at all. And then the second thing is, what's it made out of? The materials it's made out of really speak to how long it'll last. Third thing is how easy is it to set up and use? And then the fourth thing will be the cost. Now, before I get started, I do wanna preface this by saying, I might compare this a little bit to the Peak Rotary. It does have a similar look and similar style to it. And I'm really familiar with the Peak Rotary. I've tied on that thing for years. And I know a lot of you folks have too but I really do want this review to stand on its own. So one more thing before I get into the review, I haven't tied on this thing an awful lot. Uh, I just got it in the middle of last week. So I tied on it last night and earlier today. So I've made a total of about eight flies on it. So I can't speak from a whole lot of experience, but I can tell you, I got a good feel for it. So first thing, how well does this thing hold a hook? Well, no complaints from me here. The jaws do remind me of a griffin vise, either the Montana mongoose or, you know, an Odyssey spider. It's got the cam and the, the bolt right here. Now, I did have some hooks slip a couple of times, but I would really attribute that to me just getting used to it and getting it set up at the right tension. No, no fault of the vise. Now, what is it made out of? Well, it's mostly aluminum. There's... Um, the jaws are steel. Put a magnet on it, you see they stick to it right there. But pretty much everything else is aluminum. The bolts here are metal. I'm not really sure if they're aluminum or not. All except for the one bolt holding the post into the pedestal, that one's plastic. And the total weight with the pedestal, just like this right here, is one pound and 14 ounces. So it's not a real heavy vise. With the C-clamp instead of the pedestal, it comes in at 15 ounces, so just under a pound there. The pedestal is painted aluminum, does have four rubber feet on the bottom, and it's got these pockets right here for holding hooks and beads. Now, why I mentioned that it's painted is because I've already got a couple of dings on this one, and I didn't notice if it came out of the box that way or if I put these little scratches on it in the two hours I've used it. So they're not bad, but just keep that in mind. You know, in five years of use, you, this thing might be scratched up and dinged up a little bit. So that's all pretty good so far. No bad marks against it yet. It is pretty lightweight though. So if you like a pedestal base and the big heavy one, you might be a little bit disappointed in this. But if you were considering this for a travel vise, yeah, the lightweight would be a bonus. So how easy is this thing to set up and use? Well, first off, it came in a no frills, plain brown box. It was packed pretty well, so that was a good thing. And there is a little bit of assembly required on it. The vise itself and the post came together. The bobbin cradle was not on it. And of course it wasn't attached to the, the pedestal, but the pedestal did come in this nice little neoprene uh, case right there. So when I pulled it out of the box, it did have a bolt on it right here. You know, you had to pull this bolt off and slide the bobbin cradle up on. And then if you want to put it in the pedestal, make sure you take this bolt off because the pedestal, these, these, this post is threaded. The pedestal is not. So you just slide it in there and lock it with this bolt. But if you want to put it on the C-clamp, yeah, you need this bolt right here. So let me show you how we do that real quick and talk about the, the clamp. They call this a table clamp because, well, it's still kind of a C but it's really a pretty nice one. It's solid. It's aluminum painted black. It's got a two and a quarter inch opening and then it's got a, a rubber foot right there to keep it from scratching up your bench. But here's one thing that I didn't necessarily like about it. To put this on, you had to screw it. So you screw this on and you'll want to screw it about halfway and then, you know, so it's a little, it's not hard, but you know, it's a little bit cumbersome. And then you have to lock this bolt in and get it at the, the right angle you want. And they did, you know, send a, a little bag with 
a couple Allen wrenches and a screw right there. So you really lock that one down. And then now you've got your, your vise ready to go. But what this also means is it's at a fixed height. There's no way to adjust the height on it. You know, a lot of C-clamps out there, they're hollow all the way through. You slide the, the post up and down and then lock it with a bolt on the side. This one doesn't have that. So the height it is, that's the height you get. Now, in all fairness, it's set at a pretty good height and it was comfortable for me to tie on like this, but that might not be the same for everybody. So if you're not gonna use a C-clamp, what you do there, you pull that bolt off and then you just slide this in and then it's just pretty much like any pedestal vise out there. You lock that bolt in and you know, you're good to go. So that's it for the setup. Really nothing too difficult at all. So let's talk about how easy is it to use. Now there are three adjustments that you're gonna to have to do in your normal course of tying. So the first one, putting a hook in it. And again, uh, very simple here. You've got the cam on it. So you just kind of open the cam and then you have this bolt right here. You'll loosen or tighten this one until you can just, you know, your hook, you get your hook in there and you get a little bit of purchase on it, not tight. Then you lock that cam right there. Now your hook's in there. It's not gonna go anywhere. Then the second thing you might wanna adjust is if you're gonna use it as a rotary, you've got a bolt here with the Allen wrench on top. You'll have to loosen this one up so that you can move the, the jaw assembly up and down like this. Remember, if you wanna tie it in the rotary, use a rotary function, you need the shank of the hook in line with the axis of rotation. So you'll need to adjust that up and down and then lock it back with the, the Allen wrench. And it's not hard to do. Um, yeah, you just have to take your time and, and be a little bit careful with it. But then when you get it locked, it's really locked. So it's not really hard to do, but if you went back and forth from using it as a rotary or a non-rotary, or you change the size of your hooks a lot, it could get a little bit cumbersome having to break out that Allen wrench every time you wanted to adjust it. Now, the last adjustment you'll wanna make is adjusting the actual tension on how you know, easily or, or how tight or how loose it spins around it. And you've got two bolts for that, two nuts here. Uh, one right on the under, underside and then one right here closest to you. And as far as I can tell, they do exactly the same thing. So what I found myself doing is just keeping this one, the bottom one, the small one fairly loose and then I would adjust it with this big one right here. And loosen it right there and it's pretty freely spinning and then a half a turn right there and it's tight. But here's something that I ran into when tying on this thing. I like the fact that I could loosen that with one hand, spin it around and then tighten it back. Maybe I want to tie on the underside of it or just um, you know, spin it around to look at it. When I adjusted it and got the tension just right for my tying style, whatever, however I like it, you know, just a little bit like that right there, you know, not too stiff, but able to move it around. It was stiff enough that sometimes when I would spin it, I would move the whole base of the fly. And I found myself having to hold down, you know, push down right here, hold the, the base to the bench and then spin it around this way. Again, I attribute that to it being a pretty lightweight vice. So is that a deal breaker for me? No, not really, but it was definitely a con. Okay, now the last thing I wanna talk about is the price. They do sell this thing with three options. You can get it with just the, the table clamp or just a pedestal or both. And with just the table clamp, they're selling it for $125. With the pedestal, $135. Or with both, it's $150. Okay, now for my overall review and the wrap up, is this thing worth what you're gonna pay for it? Well, I'm gonna kind of wuss out a little bit on this one and say maybe. It is a pretty solid vice and I think it's gonna last you a pretty long time. And as a travel vice, I think it'll be great. But if you just like a pedestal and you like a heavy one, then probably not. I'm, I don't think I would recommend it for you. Now, if any of y'all are in the market right now for a vice in March of 2022, you might've realized that the Peak Rotary is now $185. It wasn't that long ago that it was $155. So this thing with just the, the pedestal at $135, it's not really fair to compare it to the peak because you know it's $50 cheaper. 
Now that certainly levels a playing field a good bit. And if you're considering this for a travel vice, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good one for that. But at $125 or $135, that's kind of an expensive travel vice. So while I'm not 100% behind this saying go out and buy one today, I'm not dogging it either. It really is a pretty solid vice. And for me and how I tie, if it just had a little bit bigger of a base and a heavier base, yeah, it could be a great vice. Now, one last thing I want to mention, special thanks to Thomas Walls, who got his vice last week too. He emailed me his review of it, and I think it was very similar to what I had to say here. But one thing to note, his did arrive with a warped base, and he called him up and they sent him another one almost instantly. So thumbs up for their customer service. And you know, there's something to be said about a company that, that does give you good customer service. So that's it for the review. I hope it was helpful for you. Now, a lot of you folks who are familiar with the channel, you know I like to give away the products after I review them, so let's do that now. If you're interested in entering the random drawing for this, two things I wanna ask of you. First is, if I don't have a picture of your bench, please email me one. Just send an email to matt at savageflies.com. And it's unfortunate that I have to do that, but a couple of times last year, I gave away some nice items and the winners of them were not even fly tires. They went off and sold the product on eBay. And that's not the intent of the channel. My mission here is to encourage new tires to get in the sport and to give back to the community however I can. Then the second thing to do, easy. Just leave a comment anywhere in your comment, put hashtag Nirvana. This video is gonna be published Sunday, March 27th, 2022. Let's say next Saturday, it's gonna be April 2nd. I'll go to the random comment picker and select a winner. So that's it, everybody. Just my way to say thanks. I appreciate you guys supporting me and the channel. Y'all take care and see you in a couple days.